Barnes. I want to thank you for tuning in to the Adirondack Opry tonight. We're going to do a special episode tonight. It's a best of episode featuring some of our best performances throughout the Adirondack Opry. We're on, I believe, what is our 15th episode, and uh, we're going to bring you a best of here. We figured it was about time to show you some of our past performances and uh, going to do a little interview in between and tell you some stories about the band and myself. And uh, I hope you enjoy tonight's show. This is a special show for me, and I hope you enjoy it as much as I enjoyed making it. Cheyenne started at about 1980. Uh, this band's been around for about 25 years now. Uh, my father, Dick Barnes, started it in 1980. He'd been in a band called Woody and the Country Swingers and just decided he wanted to do something on his own, and uh, he put the band Cheyenne together. I remember riding along one day in, uh, in the car trying to think up names and I believe it was an old Chevy Cheyenne pickup that he, he saw that went by and he says, geez, that'd be a good name for the band. I can't exactly remember who the uh, first members were. I do remember, some of you might, might remember uh, Ronnie Hastings. I believe he was the first lead guitar player. Uh, over the 30 year period, this band's had probably 75 different members, I believe. I sat down and tried to figure it out. We're somewhere up around the 75 area. and. Uh, still together and still out there making that traditional country music um, I don't know we've had quite a few local people that that you know well uh, Larry Edwards Rick Little these guys some of those guys have been in the band four or five times throughout those 30 years uh, they've had a lot of fun played a lot of good music met a lot of good people and here we are all these years later and we're still out there doing it and there's a lot to be said for that because there's not a lot of a lot of local bands that are still out there doing it um, I'm happy to be carrying on the family tradition the way Dad started it with the traditional country music. And uh, what we're going to do right now is uh, we'll take it to a clip from our very first episode. This was featuring the great Sonny Thompson. <laughs>
actually had no choice but to get involved in this music business thing right from the time I was two years old I remember getting a, a guitar for Christmas and I got a picture I believe in a baby book that my mother made up and uh, it's a picture of me standing there holding an old flat top guitar I didn't stand a chance I was bound to get into this business I grew up around it he, uh, exposed to it all my life uh, most of you already know that my dad was on a show called the Pete Williams show on WRGB back in the late 60s mid 60s into the to early 70s I believe I don't have a lot of memories about the Pete Williams show. I don't. I, mean, I guess I must have been pretty young. I don't even know that I can recall even seeing an episode of it. I do remember going to a few live shows. The band continued on the road uh, a few years after the show actually went off the year off the air, and I do remember going to some of those shows and meeting some people like uh, you know David Allen was on the show. He used to have pick a show on WRGB and uh, just meeting some people like that. Uh, it was a lot of fun as I recall. I do remember there was a lot of talk about it. I remember all of that, the, the talk about my dad and being on TV and, and all that. I, I do remember those, those years and he was on and off even after the Pete Williams show. He had several, several different bands on and off and he gave it up for a few years in between there and uh, I just thought, I don't, I guess some of my early memories are he was gone a lot, I remember that, but he was always gone playing, and at the time, I guess I never noticed, I just figured that was the way it was supposed to be, you know, Dad was out there making a living on the road playing music, and now that I'm older, I, I really I really do respect that. Uh, I've told this story a couple times before, I guess I was probably about 10 years old, and uh, I've always felt like it was maybe kind of my fault a little bit that he didn't go a little bit further than he did, I mean, he's done real well locally, but I, I've always felt he could have probably went on a national level but part of that was always my fault I remember one time I was uh, 10 years old and I was sick and he had to go play somewhere but he says geez you know you get better he says and I'll take you for a banana split I remember saying uh, geez I've never even had a banana split and he looked at me and he says you're 10 years old and you've never had a banana split I think something clicked in his head that uh, maybe he'd been gone away from home a little bit too often and I recall him slowing down an awful awful lot after that and just cutting down the playing weekends or one night a week. I mean, for, for the early part of my life, he was on the road, I believe six nights a week they played uh, out with the Pete Williams show. So he'd be gone on his day job all day long, and he'd get home long enough to change his clothes, and he'd be out again. But I can't, I can't fault him for any of it because that's why I'm here today. I learned everything that I know from him. Uh, he is by far my most respected musician in my life. I've got a lot of favorites. Uh, my favorite is Willie Nelson, but absolutely nobody has had more influence on me than than dad uh, he's taught me everything I know and I'm, I'm hoping that I can can keep it up and keep this band going for another 30 years uh, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go to uh, our second episode of the Adirondack Opry it featured a girl that was a girl singer in Cheyenne at one time uh, dad had a few of them he started out with Patty Butler was singing for him and I believe Sharon was after Patty uh, Patty Carroll was also in there. She was a she was one of the girl singers for a while, and he also started out somebody that you all know who's still out there performing now, uh, Charlie Dwyer. But this is a clip from our second episode. This is Sharon Denny. <laughs>
when I was uh, probably about four or five years old was the first time Dad tried to teach me how to play guitar. Um, we sat around the house one day, and, and he was trying to show me, but I don't know. It was always frustrating. Never came easy to me. He, he'd sit down and try to try to teach me a few chords and all that, and it was so easy for him, and he'd get frustrated with me because I couldn't get it, and I'd get frustrated with him because he thought it was so darn easy, and it always came pretty natural for him, but I, I struggled with it. Even to this day, I'm not much of a guitar player, uh, but I guess I never really tried to be. I never really tried to be the kind of person to make the guitar cry or, or you know be able to make it sing or whatever they do I just wanted to learn enough chords to accompany myself to sing a song I guess and that's basically what I did I I guess I never considered myself a musician I've always considered myself an entertainer um, I like the entertaining part of the business I like the, the show part of the business and I like the business part of the business and uh, that's what I excel at that's what I try to do um, like I said, I've learned an awful lot from Dad. There was quite a few years there where Dad uh, wasn't doing anything at all. And through my teen years, uh, that's all I ever wanted to do was get into music. And, and of course, in my teen years, I was going to be a rock star. As a matter of fact, uh, Jack Hojan, the guy running this camera, him and myself, we grew up and we had a few bands as, as teenagers that we just kind of banged around with but I do remember each each of us we were gonna gonna save up two thousand dollars a piece and we were gonna take off across the country and go out to California and, and be stars uh, I don't know actually what happened to that I guess I got married and went one way and Jack went the other and uh, but here we are uh, 20 years later and he's running the camera for our Adirondack Opry show and uh, I'm sitting on the other side of it and it's a pleasure to still be acquainted with Jack after all these years but uh, probably before back probably I don't know I guess it's probably been about 10 years ago now. I started a band of my own called Lakota. Uh, I wanted to get out there in the country scene. We were not as traditional country as Cheyenne. We did some of the newer country, but we did a lot of southern rock too. We had a really, really good band. We had a real good time with it. But the guys in that band all had kind of a different idea of what they wanted to do. And I've always had my own idea of, of how this should actually be done. And not that I, I claim to... to know everything there is to know about about music or, or how to run a band but I have a vision on where I want my groups to be and what I want my bands to do and I won't compromise that for anything um, I keep focused with my vision and I'm lucky enough to to be working with some guys that we all kind of share the same vision and, and we're just out there on the road doing it every week but Lakota was my first experience at actually running a band I had that band for probably three or four years had a lot of fun with it Played a lot of a lot of good shows and um, had some good friends in that band, but like I said, they they all broke off and went into other bands, and I kind of laid low a little for a while, and uh, which brought us up to the point we're at now. But as I said earlier, there's been a lot of a lot of different members in Cheyenne throughout the years. Uh, we've counted. I tried to count sometime. I think we're up around 75 different members. Uh, there's been some better versions than others. It's been up and down. The the best version that I can I can remember in my mind is uh, Dad had Wally Jocelyn on steel guitar, Larry Edwards on lead, uh, John Salty's on drums, and Bobby Harold on bass. That was the most professional combination that I have ever seen in this band. I mean, those guys were top shelf. They were right on top of everything. It was one song after another. There was absolutely no dead air. Um, they opened for some... Uh, some national acts. I remember a, a Billy Thundercloud show. They opened up for Billy one time. And uh, I mean, these guys were working. Dad kept those guys working four or five days a week. They'd travel anywhere, go anywhere. And uh, that was a real, real good combination. Um, they've all gone off in different directions. I think John's out in Salt Lake City, Utah now. And uh, Wally's down in Florida. I'm not sure about, about Bobby, where, where he's at now. But uh, those were a real bunch of good guys. And uh, I would have liked to have been part of the band at that time. Um, my being part of the band never actually came till, till much, much later. Um, I believe it was Frenchie Bellinger was talking to Bob Russo that owns the Broad Oven Hotel one day, and he came up with an idea of having a jam session there on Sunday afternoons. And uh, it just took off from there. I don't even remember who the first members were. I think Larry came back at that point. I don't even know that it was Cheyenne at that point. It was just some guys that were going to get together and... Uh, gonna just jam at the Broad Oven Hotel and that's been seven years ago now 
and uh, then it just became Cheyenne, and we took over, and we do an afternoon jamboree called the Old Dogs Jamboree, and we get some local talent to get up with us each and every Sunday. And uh, that's when I actually got involved in the band and, and stepped into the picture. Uh, we've had a pretty good run. We've had quite a few members since we've been doing that, in just the seven years. I think we've been through about five drummers and three or four lead guitar players and, I don't know, a couple bass players, a few steel players. I would like to make special mention of... Uh, couple of guys that I got the opportunity to work with playing steel guitar was Dow Thomas and Chuck Morehouse. Um, they both passed on now. They both passed on just in the last couple of years. And uh, we cert certainly do miss them. And I had an awful good time playing with them. And they are legends throughout the area. Both of them had been members off and on of Cheyenne through the, the 25 years. And uh, we sure do miss them. And, uh, you know, we know that they're uh, still up there in Hillbilly Heaven playing their steel guitars and, and still enjoying that country music. Some of my favorite episodes of the Adirondack Opry, we've done two of them with him right now, and it's been the absolute most special time to me. And these are the ones that have featured my dad. Here's an episode featuring my dad, Dick Barnes. Make the world. Opry was actually all my idea. Um, as most of you probably know, Dad moved to Tennessee a couple years ago, and uh, we didn't want to stop this thing from going, and, and him and I had a long talk one night, and we were sitting down over a cup of coffee and just discussing what was going to happen with the band, and, and he said he wanted me to take over. He wanted me to, to keep it going, and uh, boy, I'll tell you, I was awful nervous. Those are awful big shoes to fill. Uh, but we talked about it, and, and he had confidence in me, and uh, he said, I know that you can do it. So I, I took over the show, and, and here we are two years later, and it's still going on. There was a lot of people that were, this isn't going to work once Dick leaves, and boy, this thing's going to fall apart, and boy, I'm awful glad that it didn't, because I just want to make him proud, and I want to be out there and continue his vision of uh, doing a traditional country music. There's not any bands out there that I know of. That are, that are doing the traditional stuff that we are. They might do one or two songs occasionally. We're just the opposite. We do one or two newer songs 
and almost all the rest are, is traditional. Uh, it's been a, a fun, fun thing for me. It's been a really good experience. The Adirondack Opry idea was mine. I just come up with this idea that it was something that I wanted to do on a local level and feature some of our talent. We've gotten to work with such great talent around this area. There are some really, really talented singers around here, and uh, it's a pleasure to get up there and, and back them up. And you know, we try to squeeze in everybody we did. I've got enough enough guests in my mind to keep this show going for for years, if I if I possibly can. Uh, we just we tape one a month. But you see two a month on, on the actual television, uh, so to, it takes us a little bit to, to keep up with that. But uh, try to do what we can. Um, one fun episode to do was we got a little lady. We call we say she's little, but she's loud. She's been around the area for a while, and she played with the great Zach Ponzi for, for many, many years. And this was a real fun episode to film, uh, and, to, and she was really fun to back. Uh, this episode is going to feature our, our next guest. This was Linda Lee. gotten to work with a lot of the veteran entertainers that, that come over for our old dogs jamboree or have been part of our Opry show but every once in a while we stumble upon somebody new that comes in and they get up and they sing a couple songs for us or something and something clicks that yeah we got it we got to give this one a shot that's like our next guest uh, this guy had come walking into the hotel one day and, and he wanted to get up and sing a couple songs and had a fantastic voice and to this day, after all the episodes we've done, he has drawn by far the biggest crowd. I don't know, he had about 150 people at his show. And uh, he did a real good job, and uh, we were proud to have him on the show. Uh, let's show an episode here that featured Kevin Older. <laughs>
with the Adirondack Opry show, you never know quite what's going to happen. I mean, as you saw there in the Kevin Older episode, I mean, we just had over a hundred witches just popped in. We had no idea they were coming, and they, they just came in. It was a Halloween episode, and uh, boy, that was an awful lot of fun. And we've had a lot of that kind of thing happen here at the show. Over the 25 years that Cheyenne's been together, we've had the opportunity of working with quite a few uh, national acts. Uh, of course, Dad dealt with a lot more of them back in the early days uh, when he was playing down at Dave Denny's barn. I mean, they they worked with Grandpa Jones and Red Foley and you know Buck Owens and, and all kinds of them. Just in, in more recent years, uh, we've done a couple shows with Bobby G. Rice and uh, Tommy Cash. Uh, we did the Billy Thundercloud thing there several years ago, like I, I had mentioned before. Um, and being in this business, I've gotten to meet some some pretty impressive people and, and gotten to talk to them. Um, I met David Allen Coe and, and a few of those guys. Probably the most one that made the most impression on me that I met was Johnny Paycheck. Uh, we had a nice conversation with Johnny and, and we went to a show at a place called Remington's that was down in Colony at the time. It's long since closed up. But that was right around the urban cowboy days when they had the mechanical bulls and all that. And um, We got to spend a little time with Johnny and got to talk with him and uh, you know, these it, it, there's some real interesting characters out there uh, doing this country music thing. Um, but even locally, you know, we meet a lot of a lot of people that are just awful nice people. And this that goes for our next performer here. This this kid come in and he's just a young guy, but boy, he comes out with some of the oldest, most traditional country music that you have ever heard, and and, and he just sings it right from his heart. Uh, this ne next episode features Justin Carey. More and more. Right now, uh, the group of guys we have in the band, we got Gary Warner on lead guitar and uh, Tom Patterson on drums. Uh, they both have recently just came back to the band. They had uh, been away for a couple years. Gary moved to Florida and Tommy stepped back for a couple years to spend a little time with the family. And uh, They've recently come back and joined back up with the band. And We got Steve Morris on steel and fiddle and uh, he's been with us for a few years now. And uh, Phil Minnick 
who's our bass player, he just stepped in after Dad left. He's only been with us for two years because Dad played bass for the for the last five years that he that he was here. He didn't always play bass in Cheyenne. As a matter of fact, he always just sang. He just fronted the band. Um, I think I'm not sure why he started playing bass this time around. I think it was just uh, couldn't find a bass player, I guess, at the time. So he just stepped in and started playing. But uh, we've got Phil in there playing bass now, and, and Phil does an incredible job. He's a he's a veteran on the music scene. Been around for for a lot of years. Uh, we've met a lot, a lot of a lot of newcomers have come to the Adirondack Opry, but there's been also a lot of veteran performers that are been around the area for for a lot of years playing, and that's that includes our next guest. Uh, her and her husband have been out there on the scene for for quite some time. Uh, Herman Flossie Flossie May Hobbs, uh, Dow Thomas, who played steel with us, that that passed away there. He uh, played steel with them for quite a few years, and Flossie and Herm are still out there doing it every week, every Friday night. They're out there back in Sunny Thompson and working with Sunny, and uh, we're going to feature Flossie on this episode of the Adirondack Opera. <laughs>
as far as uh, Cheyenne goes, Cheyenne's always been strictly a traditional country band. Uh, myself, like I said earlier, with Lakota, we did a lot of southern rock, and you know, in my early days, I, I was really into to rock. But uh, you know, as I got older, I mean, I always grew up around country music. It was always there. The outlaw years with Waylon Jennings and Willie Nelson and David Allen Coe, those had the most influence on me to get totally involved in country music. That was around 78 or 79, I guess. I graduated in 79. I was still listening to the rock stuff, but that's when that outlaw stuff started sneaking in on me, and I started listening to a lot of that. And um, that's what that's what kind of brought me over to country. And then, of course, I mean, I'd always heard all the old stuff. I mean, Dad always had that stuff around the house. But even Dad, a lot of people don't know this, even Dad uh, didn't always do the traditional country thing. He's had a few different groups. Uh, I can't remember all of them off the top of my head. I remember there was the Dick Barnes Trio at one time. And uh, he's also told me some stories about one band that he was in that they would do different sets. Uh, you know, they would come out at the beginning of the night in, you know, suits and the thin ties and all that and do rock and roll. Then they go in the back room and they change and they come out with Hawaiian shirts on and they do, you know, Hawaiian music and... And then they do a set of standards, and then they go back in and put the hats on and the boots and come out and do a set of country, all in one night in one place. Uh, so he's done a lot of, a lot of different kinds of music himself. But you know, obviously the traditional country stuff has always, always been in our hearts. Um, you know, I'm not saying that there's not some good, good stuff out there today, and I don't mean to, to you know, to put anybody down because obviously those guys are out there and they're they're making millions and millions of dollars doing the kind of music that they do but you know the 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 Kenny Chesney thing and all that it just doesn't do anything for me I don't I don't see where that's really country at all you know they call it new country but I don't even understand that term country's country it's either country or it ain't you know I don't really understand that that particular term so we we try to stick with our with our older stuff uh but we do get some guests on once in a while that, that do some of the newer stuff, and there was nobody that hit that stuff like like our next guest. Uh, she did a combination of new and old stuff. This girl has one phenomenal voice. Uh, this is an episode that featured Carrie Lambert. <laughs>
this last run here has uh, been the only version of Cheyenne that I can ever recall that didn't feature a female singer. Uh, the first first few years was uh, Patty Butler. She was the the girl singer, and uh, Sharon Denny was after that. <laughs> Patty Carroll was uh, was the girl singer after that. But there was a girl that came in and uh, that was looking for a singer at the time, and she walked through the door and she said she wanted to sing in a country band and. She'd never sang before. She'd never been in a band before. And uh, she got up to sing, and she couldn't hardly hit a note. You know, I, and Dad said he was going to give this girl a shot. And I, I couldn't even imagine what he was thinking at the time. And boy, was I totally wrong, because this girl didn't put hardly any time into it at all. It just all of a sudden came out naturally. She must have been awful nervous at first, but within just a matter of a couple of months, she was singing like an angel, and she's still out there today. Uh, her name is Charlie Dwyer. She was out there at the time. She was out there doing it. Now she goes around with her and her husband. Uh, they go by the name of the Country Backtracks. It's her and her husband, Dick. And uh, they're out there entertaining every week. And she is by far the most popular female singer around here now. And she got her start right with right with this band. She never sang a note until she joined this band. And Dad threw her right out there and, and made her do it. And uh, she's done a real good job, and she's still out there doing it. For 14 years... Uh, I ran a shop called the Guitar Shed. I had a, a music store and um, I played music on the side and, and ran this, this store. Uh, I worked at a store down in Schenectady, one of the big major stores for a few years and just thought it would be nice to have my own music store. I did that for quite a few years and, and that worked out real great but when dad moved to Tennessee and I took the band over there just not was not time to do everything. I couldn't put all the time I needed to put into the store and function the band the way it needed to be properly done. So I ended up closing it not this past June, but last June, and done nothing but focus on, on music. Um, I've taken a lot of it to another level, things that, that Dad had never really done. Um, I do a Christmas show at the Glove Theater every year. This is going to be our third annual annual show, and uh, we produce the whole show. It's a unbelievable Christmas show. we got scenery and, and dancers and special guests, and uh, we have kids involved. We usually have a children's choir, and... Uh, that's going to be coming up on uh, December 9th or 10th, I believe it is this year. I haven't completely confirmed it yet, but uh, if you can get out and see that show, I'm telling you, it's a it's a good show for the whole entire family. And uh, that's brought me to to my next venture. Uh, as I mentioned before, I had a band called Lakota. Well, I'm right now in the process of starting up a a production and booking company called Lakota Productions, and. Uh, we're going to do things like the Christmas show. I'm going to produce certain shows with Cheyenne. But we're also going to bring in some national acts to different venues around the area and uh, promote some concerts. Uh, we're going to bring some people in. And obviously Cheyenne will probably be open, opening most of these shows for these guests. we got a few things lined up. I don't want to say anything too early because we haven't got anything confirmed with some of the acts we've been talking to. But keep your eyes open because Lakota Productions is, is going to bring some country music to the area. And... Uh, we're going to feature some of these some of these people and and promote some concerts. Uh, but this Christmas show, this has been a real good thing. I've done this with a real good friend of mine for for the last two years, and she's also going to be involved with it this year. And she's one also one heck of a girl singer. Uh, and she was also a guest on the Adirondack Opry, and we're going to feature her right now. This is Heather Richards. <laughs>
just recently, Dad came back up from Tennessee and uh, he released a CD on uh, Dixieland Records. It was called My House of Memories. And he came up and did a, a little tour with us to promote the CD. Worked, I don't know, 8, 10, 12 shows with us, something like that, while he was up here. And sold some CDs. And, of course, it's that good old traditional country stuff. And uh, he just recently went back. He just left. But while he was up here, he filmed the second episode of the Adirondack Opry with us. And that's what we're going to feature right now. Here he is one more time. My dad, Dick Barnes. <laughs> enjoyed this episode of the Adirondack Opry. It was a special treat for me uh, to tell you a little story and little stories and history of the band and uh, feature some of our best performances. Uh, we've had a real good run with this show and I hope that it does continue. Um, I'm going to do something a little bit different for you right now. We're going to close the show uh, with a song that I'd like to do for my mom. Uh, I know she's out there. She's down in Tennessee and uh, I'm going to close the show with this, this song for my mom. We're going to do it live right here in the studio. And, Hopefully it comes out all right for y'all. Made a wish up on a star I could have a brand new car Got tired of wishing So I stole one Seventeen and knew it all My dreams were big, my thoughts were small So many roads and somehow I took the wrong ones And mama always loved me Even when the devil took control Jesus and mama always loved me This I know Felt tried most all my life Had kinds of lows and highs 
been a husband and I've had a couple wives to hold me. Headstrong, stubborn, couldn't be told. Wild horses that couldn't be rode. Rainbow chaser, hungry for gold and still searching. Jesus and Mama always loved me. Even when the devil took control. Jesus and Mama always loved me. This I know. Wish mom could see me now. I've turned it all around. Lately I've been going down the right road. Life's a picture that you paint. Blues and grays and cans of paint. Heaven knows I'm not a saint, but I know. Jesus and mama always love me. Even when the devil took control. Jesus and mama always love me. This I know. That one's for you, mom. Thank you for tuning in to the Adirondack Opry. We'll see you next month.